everyone so in this video we're going to be adjusting the rear park brake on this Honda so this particular vehicle is fitted with the foot park brake if you want to see how to just adjust that um, foot brake you can watch my other video the link will be down in the description but what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be releasing that adjusting the cable underneath there the factory drum system because this is a drum and brake pad setup on this particular model which would apply to most Hondas from 2006 to about 2012 so first things first we want to get the vehicle in neutral because we're going to be jacking it up at the, in the rear so we'll put the vehicle in neutral and we'll go ahead and release that park brake or you can leave it on whatever suits you if you're working in an incline I recommend chalking your wheels and now we'll go to the back and jack up the vehicle. So the factory jack point is just up there. We'll go ahead and put the jack stand underneath here and the location to put it is just there over there make sure you center that and i usually like to leave the jack in place while the jack stands are there as well for additional safety now we can go ahead and take the wheels off. Generally they're about a 19mm wheel nut size. So this is the adjuster we're looking for, that one there. While you got the wheel off you might as well check the condition of your brake pads. This one's okay. But it's coming up to its service. So it's about halfway worn. Just as an example. So we'll go ahead and take the wheel off on the other side as well. So what we want to do is go ahead and take this rubber boot off here. Just put a screwdriver and then just pull it out. Hopefully you can see that. We want to go ahead and adjust that adjuster over there. With that adjustment there. So we'll go ahead and turn it up to lock the brake drum on this side. So when we lock it, then we'll go back either 8 to 15 clicks, depending on what model you have. Now that we have removed the rear wheels, we'll go ahead, so, our base, so this handbrake is still off. We'll go ahead and release that tensioner nut over there and we'll remove the tension here because we're going to re adjust the rear wheels so once it's loose here and you can move it about a little bit there and you've got a bit of free play then you know it's loose that's loose there now we'll go to the back and make the adjustments now with the wheel off and the rubber grommet off here we'll go ahead and adjust these drum brakes so we'll go ahead and lock it so at the moment it's free so we'll tighten it until it locks on both sides and then we'll go back 15 turns so I'll put up I'll put up a short video or a picture of what that adjuster looks like so you'll see what it is. Now with the screwdriver we'll just go in there and go up till it locks. Count the amount of turns. So that's about 10. 
still moves. So that's about 13 and you've, I felt it get tight. So the register has expanded and it's got tight. And it usually means, yep, yeah, it's locked in. So now we'll go ahead and go down 15 clicks. So 15 turns. That's 10. That's 15. Now hit, we'll go to the other side and do the same thing there. Find the adjuster. First check it, see how tight it is. And now we'll go up till it locks. Again about 11, and then it's fully locked. So now we'll go back, we'll wind it back 15. So now that's fully locked, we'll wind it back 15. So that's 15 notches or 15 turns. And check the drag on both sides. You should feel similar. We're inside the vehicle now, we'll just push that down one click. So now with the foot brake down by one click, you can see that it still spins here and it's got a little bit of drag. Once the wheel is on, it'll be a lot easier. Coming to the passenger side. If for some reason you find one side is a bit easier than the other side, you can adjust the side that feels a bit easier because chances are it might have been incorrectly adjusted. So you can go up a notch on this side because this side feels a little bit easier to me. So I'll go up a notch that should just compensate for the wear. So now I've just put the wheels back on temporarily. Now we're gonna press that foot brake by one click. So we'll press that one. So now we'll go ahead and push it down by one click. So that's one click there. And now we'll just go ahead and feel. So this side doesn't have much drag, it's quite free. Now we're on the passenger side. And, if, and turning the wheel either way, it's nice and free. There's no drag, so we'll just go. So we'll just go inside now and adjust the foot brake, as I initially showed you. So now this is still pushed down by one clip. Now we'll go ahead and just tighten it till we feel, feel a little bit of drag. So if you shake this here, it's still a bit free. We'll just tighten that a little bit, and then we'll just check the rear wheels for drag. About that much. Just go small increments at a time, and I will just check the variable. 
So there's a little bit of a drag salt here. Still not as much as I would recommend. We'll, we'll just go ahead and turn, tighten that by a couple more turns and then we'll just go back and just check those rear. So now if we spin the wheel, it's free because it, there's no, it's, the foot brake has not been um, pressed or engaged. So now if we go one click, now you see the drag. And now if we come to this side as well, so there was a little bit of drag and that's what we want to see. Now we can go ahead and put everything back together. You can use some lubricant if it's too difficult. I don't find it that difficult to use silicon spray or something similar, but if you find it quite difficult, just put that in there. Like I said, you can put some ATCs in here if yours is badly rusted. We give that a good clean. Once we put the vehicle down, we'll go ahead and top the wheels. So before you drop the vehicle, Release the handbrake or the foot brake and just check your wheel, make sure it's spin free and it's not binding. It should look something like that. And then when you go down one click or a couple of clicks, it should lock in. And when you go down the specified amount of clicks, you can check for drag, as mentioned earlier. Now with the foot brake fully depressed, you shouldn't be able to turn the wheel. Just check and make sure it's locked on both sides and then you can go ahead and wrap things up and drop the vehicle. Go ahead and talk it to your specifications. This generally ranges between 110 to about 120. And then you can go ahead and pull the jack out and you're done from there. Make sure your handbrake's on, otherwise the car could roll. And then when you're done, you can just take it for a drive, engage the brakes, and then just double check your hand, your foot brake or your handbrake. Just push it, and it should be between about five to about seven clicks. This applies to nearly all of the Hondas with the drum and brake pad setup. This was more of a major adjustment. If you want to see how to do the minor adjustment, just watch the other video down in the description below. It shows you just how to adjust this and just double check on the rear. Normally you don't have to adjust the rears, you just have to just tighten this up to take up the slack in the wear in the cable. But in case you need to do it, in case your vehicle's a bit older or it has been incorrectly adjusted in the past, that this is how you, you follow the procedure and you adjust the rears along with the foot brake here at the bottom. Thanks for watching everyone. Please like and subscribe. For those of you who are curious, this is a Japanese spec Honda Odyssey. It's an absolute edition. So it's got the leather seats and it's got a proper automatic gearbox paired with the K24 iVTEC engine. It was only sold in J Japan and here in New Zealand we get it as an import. It's got seven seats. The rear ones fold. Just for anyone who's curious. So it's got a K24 
2.4 litre engine with the proper 5 speed automatic gearbox, not a CVT gearbox like the other Odysseys from the same year. This is because it's an absolute model.